The reasons lurking behind why Wolverine's claws stopped working are pretty normal to terrifying. One of the main reasons given to us in the film Logan as to why his claws begin malfunctioning, not being able to fully extend or contract, is due to adamantium poisoning. Adamantium being a fictional super strong metal could very well work similar in terms of other real life metals for the damage it would cause to an organism's cells. Metal poisoning occurs when too many metals build up in an organism's body, either through being ingested, absorbed through the skin, or in this case being fused to bone, where the metal begins disrupting normal cellular functions such as inhibiting the function of cellular enzymes which would stop the organism's metabolism, disrupting the communication between their cells, and damaging the DNA replication and repair processes. While the floating metals cause further damage to any existing DNA, while also causing new cellular proteins to misfold, giving Logan's healing factor a massive ongoing battle to win. However, adamantium is supposed to be indestructible, meaning that it doesn't corrode, leach harmful substances, or otherwise release toxins like real world metals do. That being in inert metal doesn't chemically interact with the body at all. So how do the adamantium poison Logan at all? Rather than any toxic effects, the adverse effects of adamantium poisoning may instead be related to the metal's mechanical damage. Adamantium, when bonded to Wolverine's bones, gave him increased strength and durability, but tremendously increased the repetitive wear and tear on his bones, tendons, joints, and muscles through him just walking around, causing microfractures in his underlying bones, constant inflammation that needs to be continuously healed, as well as tissue damage from his muscles or otherwise tendons being bonded to a super strong metal that they now have to drag around, let alone the stress placed on his body whenever he's in a fight. We also know that after Logan goes through the bonding process that he's definitely put on some weight, being around 100 pounds that he now has to lug around with him everywhere as the world's most advanced weight fest. Changing his mobility, sense of balance, lowering his agility, and while the metal keeps his bones from breaking and better protects his internals, it also restricts his joint mobility and makes him way more stiff. The lack of flexibility in the adamantium coated bones puts additional strain on the surrounding muscles, tendons, and ligaments, since these soft tissues are designed to work in tandem with the natural movement and flexibility of bones. However, the rigid nature of adamantium can disrupt this balance and subject the surrounding tissues to increased stress and strain during movement. This means that a significant portion of Logan's healing factor is now going towards the constant abuse his body faces from its constant contact with the metal. And you can tell his healing factor is in a constant overdrive, as it actually functions a lot slower than it does when Wolverine is metal free. After Magneto stripped Wolverine of his metal, and Wolverine was later dredging through a tunnel, he was smashed apart by an incoming train, where much like Juggernaut, he was back up only a few moments later. Adamantium also affects Wolverine's powers, where without the adamantium, we find Wolverine can track people and animals way better, with his heightened senses allowing him to smell people much further away and follow their scent. So now Wolverine's claws. Looking specifically at Wolverine's claws, his claws stop functioning due to his healing factor finally having slowed down to the point where the ligaments and tendons responsible for extending and contracting his claws are no longer healing back to perfect health so they can function as normal, and are now healing more like a regular human would. Whenever someone like you or I suffers a big enough injury, our bodies heal back together, but instead of the soft tissues going back to as they were before, they now contain scar tissue as part of the natural healing process, which involves the body working to seal up the hole or fix what's broken as fast as possible, so we're not vulnerable to things like infection. While body parts like skin normally have a randomized cross-weave collagen structure that makes them very flexible, Scar tissue is made up of entirely parallel collagen fibers that makes the fixed area very stiff and rigid as your body rapidly seals up the hole. In fact, the only animals that don't get scar tissue are animals that can fully regenerate parts of their bodies. So lizards. So while Wolverine's healing ability works like a really fast lizard, it's been so taxed over the years that either it's working more like a regular human's or his regular healing is now having to kick in entirely, leaving 
leaving him with clearly visible scars from stabs and bullet wounds on the outside as well as on the inside. Specifically, as we went over in another video, Loken's entire arm has to go through a fairly dramatic process in order for his claws to work, a process that we know is equally painful as when Rogue asks Logan does it hurt, he responds by saying every time. This is because in order for the claws to extend at all, his entire arm has to reshape and flat out break apart, with things like the bones of his forearm pushing themselves apart, as well as the complex structure of his wrist as the carpal bones can clearly be seen dividing, while the connecting ligaments and soft tissues rip and tear themselves apart, only to come back together, but this time his mutant healing factor can no longer do the entire job, and the soft tissues must resort to including more natural methods, causing scars to form. Over time, as these scars accumulate and his healing factor worsens, his soft tissue can no longer function to extend or retract his claws as they did before. Metal claws that also function through the different tendons each of them are attached to, with some tendons wearing down from the constant strain sooner than others, explaining why some of the claws still function better than the others. But there's still an even bigger reason as to why Logan's healing factor began to fail him after working so well carrying a non-toxic metal around for so many years that's been hiding just out of sight. In fact, this is why mutants like Professor X, who feels responsible for wiping out his X-Men family, and Logan's clone are more so victims in a much larger plot. I'm talking about cereal, bread, soft drinks, candy, baked goods, and all around anything sweet. In the movie Logan, we hear that no new mutant bursts have been seen in the last 20 years, and most existing ones were killed in the Winchester incident when Professor X and his power that is very much tied to his brain function had a seizure. Then halfway through the film, we see Logan help a farmer defend his water pump station from a group of men who are being paid to force him off his land so they can take it for larger companies that Logan is told are mass harvesting corn to make corn syrup that they have been flooding the market with. Then towards the end of the film, we see see Logan talk to Dr. Xander Rice, who openly explains that his biotechnology company Transigen, that focuses on genetic research and experimentation, has successfully created a gene therapy that targets and inhibits the X gene, or otherwise the mutant gene. It's heavily implied that Transigen, or more so its many subsidiary companies, are the ones who are mass obtaining farmland, so Transigen can put its gene therapy into the corn syrup that is used in so many different products, as the film explains. Going back to Wolverine, while Logan and even Charles are unlikely to gorge themselves on a box of their favorite brand cereal, we know that Logan enjoys drinking beer, and likely has had a beer that is brewed with high fructose corn syrup, and besides that may very well have occasionally eaten a piece of bread or baked good here and there. And while the gene therapy inhibits the X gene in unborn mutants, it's unlikely that already born mutants are far from free from any of its effects. It can can be inferred that the therapy alters the genetic makeup of the mutants, potentially by modifying the function of their mutant genes or introducing specific genetic changes. This alteration leads to a loss of their mutant abilities and renders them genetically similar to non-mutant individuals. However, in an already born mutant, it appears that the treatment may work to simply suppress and mess with their already expressed powers, as the therapy works to slowly alter Charles' telepathy with unknown side effects as well as the other X-Men's powers and Logan's healing factor until it's rendered completely inert, or simply less powerful, as it has yet another contender to constantly fight against. So the decline in Logan's healing factor may not be due to just adamantium poisoning. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Wolverine's primary genetic mutation is his healing ability, that at times has functioned more like an extreme survival gene rather than regeneration, as when he was ripped in half, he didn't regrow his legs like Deadpool, but rather had to reconnect his two surviving halves, as rather his mutant ability can alter his body functions depending on the situation he's in. So if you want to see how Wolverine's powers and claws really work, then check out this video. See you in the next one. One.